Welcome back to Mycology Exploration. We just wanted to take a brief moment to thank you for subscribing, liking, and we love hearing from you in the comments. We started with making a handful of videos, short topical videos for Easy Home Mycology, and the response has been 100% positive feedback. So thank you for your feedback, thank you for your positive support and comments, and thank you for subscribing. We're really excited to share with you a new recipe that we've discovered. And whether you create agar or agar, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, we're excited to share it with you. When trying to research different types of agar recipes, we found it difficult to locate which types there are and what actual recipes work to benefit mycelium growth. In one of our previous videos, we discussed how to make an MEA or malt extract agar. We found that the results were amazing after we made our transfers, but we weren't getting that amazing rhizomorphic growth we wanted. Through much research and many transfers, we found the perfect recipe to get that beautiful rhizomorphic growth we wanted. MYA, or malt yeast agar, is an amazing agar recipe. This recipe gives the perfect nutritional source from the malt extract but the addition of nutritional yeast will promote that booming rhizomorphic growth in your mycelium cultures. Nutritional yeast can be found in most health stores or online and comes in various forms from powdered to large flake. Both of these are good, but you do want to make sure you grind it to as fine of a powder as you can. We experimented with many different recipes and we really feel like we've perfected this one. So when creating 500 milliliters of agar or agar, you want to use 10 grams of agar, 7.5 grams of malt extract, 0.25 grams of nutritional yeast. Yes, that's 0.25 grams of the nutritional yeast, again, to create 500 milliliters. When working with the nutritional yeast, even when you created a fine powder, it will leave a cloudiness to your agar and particulates. We've tried straining this out and it's still there and it's okay. We have not experienced any contamination. It's been a really positive recipe with just so much rhizomorphic growth. So the particulates and the cloudiness are just not a problem at all. Again, as a reminder, if you have any condensation, just flip your Petri dishes or your jars upside down. We recently had a comment asking about the temperature of your agar before you actually pour it. And we have found in between 120 to 140 degrees is just the perfect cooling temperature to start pouring. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, thank you for subscribing. And we're really excited to share some agar tips with you in our next video. So make sure that you ring the bell to be notified when we have new videos for you.